Where would you begin if your greatest concern in life was to bring this world to sanity and order? Is this your greatest concern? Would you plan for a great reset? Would you aim for a better future? Which is what the Great Reset is. A planning for a better future. From the thinking minds of a few men. Do you, do they, understand this? That the future is a concept? Do you, do they, Understand that aiming towards any conceptual future, that the future has been conceived from the area of thinking. Further, do you, do they, understand that all thinking is founded on knowledge and that knowledge is the movement of our pasts. Does this not mean that any movement at all, even one little step towards a conceptual, designed, thought out and planned future, which is what this Great Reset is, which is how our political structures and governments lead us, is a movement of the old, repeating constantly. Could this be why we have never come together in relationship, rather prefer living within divisive nations, religions, ideologies, political structures. If we continue to repeat the old, we will only find the old. At some point, If we are to survive ourselves, which is seeming less and less likely by the day, we must come to stop acting from the old, and the old is our thinking. And our thinking gives birth to our every action. The way we live today is the way we lived yesterday. And so we always repeat this old in a modified form, which is what this Great Reset is, another cage for humanity. Humanity which has historically grown to live in such cages. How do we truly free our world? Surely only by freeing ourselves. If the pattern of our lives is to live within thinking and to act constantly from this foundation, then the pattern of our lives of ever treading over once more days gone by is responsible and is contributing to the repetition of this world's chaos. Repeating our past and our past is a bloody, warring affair. It is so because the movement of our past is rooted in division between us. Christians, Muslims, Jews, Palestinians, Brits, Americans, Republicans, 
Democrats, rich and poor, ideological divisions. We all seek security, but the security we seek is isolated to our own little group. To seek the continuity of the growth of our little corner into the future. We do this because we have grown tribally. We have grown removed from relationship with each other. And this has taken place because of the movement of our thinking. If this is true, and it appears to be, but must be thoroughly investigated by each one of us, how do we come to exit this tragic state of affairs? The state of seeking our isolated security in division against others, necessitating a build-up of arms periodic wars, self-interest, self-love and self-care. But no love or care at all for a so-called opposing group who I now come to call an enemy. An enemy because they think differently from I. They were born into a different nation. They speak a different language and they follow a different religious ideology. Must we not come to investigate the very root structure of that which comes to divide us? This is our thinking. Verify these words. Never accept a thing. Accepting the word of others is only to live life as a second-hand human being, under the control and limited ideologies of another. If we can and we do take the time to look carefully into our movement of moment-by-moment -moment thinking, we shall inevitably come to find that our thinking is divided within itself. Our thinking has divided between a thinker and thoughts. Do you never fear? Have you never suffered psychologically? Is psychological suffering not caused by inner divisions within the process of thinking? Have you never found yourself to be caught in a repetitive process of thought you would rather not be caught within? Are the movements of fears and depressions and anxieties not just such paralyzing and divisive movements to our lives. Our world is in chaos because our minds are in chaos. Our minds are in chaos because we have no understanding of them. We have never verified the call of the eternally present experts who constantly enjoy informing us of their findings, which we are trained to diligently accept. We have never then first-hand studied what we are psychologically, which is root movement to all of our actions. There is no Satan destroying this world, no evil. There is only us and the conflicted movement within us, which we have never taken the time or looked upon as serious enough 
to come to undertake a journey into, to understand. As thought is base for all our actions, and our actions collectively over thousands of years have led us to this undesirable moment of human evolution. Is it not the case that we shall collectively only ever begin to heal if we can come to heal our inner thinking minds? If we can undergo a psychological revolution and totally change the approach we collectively hold today towards our lives. If we can find the inner strength to look into ourselves, and we need inner strength, for this is arduous work. For the brain of mankind is indeed a conflicted place. But if we can come to find the time, the energy, the passion to watch ourselves, only this, simply to watch, not to add further thought to what we see, for then again we are caught in a process of an inner division, a division against what we see then we may, in time, come to an understanding of the inner workings of that which we are. And if we can understand the inner workings of what we are, we can bring our inner world to peace. And this will be the beginning of peace in our world. Divided as it is, this world of humanity has never functioned as a whole. Divided as our minds are, as thought is divided in its very nature, our minds have never functioned as a whole. The word whole has relationship etymologically to the word holy. Our world is far from holy today because we approach it always in a fragmented fashion, each of us from our own little corner. We never view the entirety of mankind, which is what we are. Our world can heal, but not through any planning, not through any great reset, not through any outer activities, because we approach all outer activities from the initially divisive states of our knowledge-based functional minds living in the past, living on thought, which is the past, for thought is knowledge and knowledge is the known. If you hear any sense in these words, it will begin to act within you. You need do nothing, only watch, watch, with passionate interest, understanding the seriousness of this investigation. And as you watch, in silence, never adding greater commentary in words to what you see, then what you see, naturally, will begin to reveal itself to you, and in such revelation may come the understanding of your life, the understanding of your inner world, the same for each of us. This is the beginning of the healing of our world. It seems to me 
that our self-centered problems and the problems that lie beyond our own personal crises, disturbances and miseries, the world about us is more or less in chaos, in great confusion. I think everybody will admit that, without a great deal of trouble, with a great deal of investigation. And nobody, apparently, sees a solution for this, neither politically, nor religiously, nor economically. That again is an obvious fact. And nobody asks if there is a way out of all this. The trap in which human beings have been caught for millennia, if there is any way out of this mess, confusion, turmoil, terror. Not finding an answer, many people resort to the old traditions, join old religions, or form a small community, hoping thereby to solve their own particular problems. And I may suggest that there is a way out of all this. Out of our present continuous misery, conflict, strife, various forms of terror, and the threatening wars, not only near but far. So to investigate all this and find out if there is a solution, a way out, without suppression, without escape, without any kind of illusion, And if you will have the patience, energy, and the serious responsibility that's involved, we can think together. I hope you are prepared for that, thinking together. There are two different kinds of thinking. One, thinking about something, about the problem, about a personal issue, <coughs> or about the world, and so on. That is, thinking about something. And is there another kind of thinking which is not about something? Please, carefully, I'll go into this widely and deeply, if I may, so we are asking, uh, where our minds are accustomed to think about something, about a problem, out of our personal desires, fulfilments, sorrow, anxiety and so on, about something. 
And we are accustomed to that, thinking about. I'm ask, we're asking not about something, but thinking itself. If this issue is clear, not about something which will come later on, but thinking together, see the please see the difference. Thinking together does not mean that you agree or disagree, accept or reject defend or offend, but together find out if it is possible by thinking together we can act together. 